Hello everyone, I'm Benjamin Yoder with OneControlReport.com here today to talk to you about Kanagawa Jet Girls. This is a PlayStation 4 racing game from Honey Parade Games, the developers of the Sinner Kagura franchise, and probably most notable for this particular release, uh, Sinner Kagura Peach Beach Splash. And this game follows a similar concept as that title, with you know essentially being a water gun game where basically girls are shooting each other with water guns. Uh, and in the case of Peach Beach Splash, it was a third person shooter. In the case of Kandagawa Jet Girls, it's actually a jet ski racing game. And it might be tempting to compare this to Wave Race, but it's definitely more like a Mario Kart per se. Uh, you'll find the usual arcade style racing game elements here with things like the ability to do like a drift. When as you drift, the longer you drift, uh, you'll get like a speed boost. Um, you can pick up items on the course to spin out other racers. Um, there are some elements from some jet, jet ski racing games, like you know a trick system here. Um, there's also the ability to customize your jet machine, you know, create something that fits your play style. I will say, compared to other like arcadey racing games, uh, Jet Girls' track design is very samey. There's essentially like two very distinct tracks, and then from there they all kind of blend together. Uh, but there are dynamic obstacles in this game that kind of alleviate that a little bit. Basically, there are like these balloons that that fall on the track and they don't seem to have like a set spawn pattern um, so while you can just kind of push through them they'll nudge you around um, so they can they can mess up a turn so you really need to be aware of, of what's in front of you on every lap even if it's the same turn that you're doing you know you know three laps in a row essentially but what really stands out about Kandagawa Jet Girls is its interconnected boost management system that has a lot of trade-offs Essentially, you'll be doing various actions to build up your boost meter, as you'd probably expect. Uh, things like tricks, you can drive through these rings on the course. Uh, there are item pickups that increase your boost, as well as uh, some, some racing mechanics like drifting will also contribute to your boost as well. Um, and the standard use for this, this boost meter is basically can use your boost in 20% intervals. And then if you want to, you can also hold the, the boost button down and then continue to burn it at 1%. Uh, at a time until you let go of the boost button. Uh, but the big thing here is that in addition to that, you can also save up your boost to 100% and essentially get two additional options. Uh, one is a temporary infinite boost. And what this is, is essentially there's a time period that you will be able to boost, you know, as much as you want. There's no bo boost meter or anything like that. You just have a timer that you have during that thing. Um, but the key thing here is that when you're in this state, you're not able to regain any boost. So you can't use like the rings to get more boost. You can't, um, you can't do a trick to gain more boost and things like that. So what you have to do in this state is really focus on speed. The other thing you can do with the 100% boost is modify your weapons. So essentially, most weapons in this game are very close range combat focused. So even if you get something like a sniper rifle, um, you're going to just shoot something that's within your view, essentially. There's definitely a lot more closer, closer range ones like, you know, a shotgun, a water shotgun, essentially. Um, but when you have a 100% boost and you have one of these weapons, you get a Mario Kart style uh, special attack. So you can think of this as, say, the lightning bolt Mario Kart, where it spins out everybody in front of you. Uh, a blue shell option where you can launch a rocket to the first to hit first place or red shell so essentially shoots a, a, a missile that follows the track and then hits the person that's in front of you next. But it's worth noting that, you know, unlike Mario Kart, where a lot of these items would be kind of exclusive to somebody in the back third of the race in terms of position, this game gives you access to these at basically any point, you know, no matter what position you're in. But these types of actions, the temporary infinite boost and the weapon specials will come with a risk because they'll leave you at a 0% boost, which will make you vulnerable until you rebuild that boost. So other people have the opportunity to cut in front of you, you know, using their own resources. So it really makes you make choices between you know being hyper aggressive and causing havoc on the on the course by you know launching off all these Mario Kart style specials or maintaining a consistent boost so you just you know maintain a consistent speed throughout the race you're constantly gaining more boost through doing various actions or just rushing to hit 100% boost as soon as possible so you can just do that time boost as much as possible for the entire race and utilize all the speed resources that are on the track like speed boost you also can customize your jet ski so you can kind of modify it to fit what your play style is going to be, whether that be, you know, increasing your top speed, increasing your handling. Uh, there's also ones that are more favored towards, you know, giving you additional boost when you're drifting and things like that. In addition to this, like, you know, 
general choice you have to make during the race in terms of like, what your current position is and how you should be playing. Uh, there's also a layer of micro choices in this game. Uh, different tricks offer different buffs, so you can increase your handling temporarily, you can increase your top speed, you also can gain invincibility. And so you'll want to use these tricks on different courses at different ramps uh, and to best utilize those, those, those effects. And using weapons in this game is not free like in Mario Kart. You can't just throw a green shell ahead of you in an instance. Using weapons are slow. They need to aim, the auto aim will come into play, and then they'll shoot. And while you're in this state where, where your character's aiming, you're not able to boost, you're not able to drift. So, so it really restricts how you can control your character. Um, especially so when you're aiming behind you, because when you're aiming behind you, the AI takes control of your jet ski, and you know they are not the greatest uh, uh, drivers per se. <laughs> so, so it's not uncommon to just like ram right into the wall because you're because you're AI. And then you also have you know when you're just racing itself, you have the ability to kind of tilt the nose of your jet ski back and forth. If you pull it back, you get a speed boost, but also reduces your handling. If you push it forward, it reduces your speed, but increases the handling you have. And so it's just throughout the race, there's these constant choices you're making. And, you know, they may not seem like they matter in the short term, you know, getting an extra three to four miles per hour as you pull back on the stick on a straightaway. But when you're in online competitive races and, you know, against other people who are, are being effective in adapting their resources and utilizing, you know, all these elements of the game, when you're 0.01 seconds apart, that time you spent not tilting your nose up matters. So if you're playing against competitive players who are at your level, it's this really intense online experience that I, I, I love because it's, it's very hectic. There's a lot of strategy here. And while there are, you know, these, these moves that in Mario Kart might be considered, you know, cheap, like a blue shell, they aren't free or completely random. They come at a cost to the other players. So people are deliberately making these choices. You know, there, there is some level of randomness with, you know, what items they get to pick up and things like that. But, you know, people are able to kind of choose how they want to handle, you know, the position they're in rather than just, you know, using whatever the game hands to them all the time. When we're talking about these elements, the playability and mechanics of Jet Girls, Jet Girls is a great game. It is probably my favorite racing game that I've played in a long time. The problem is, this only matters if you're able to play online. If you can get a competitive game online, I think you will really like Jet Girls. The problem being, there's just not really a player base. Uh, there's a PS4 and PC version, and it splits up those users between those versions. Also, there's a pretty steep barrier to entry because when you start the game, you have a default jet machine that does not have any parts or components that can be switched in. So if you go online just from, you know, buying the game, you are essentially, you know, useless in that race. You cannot catch up to the other players. You cannot be competitive. So it really forces you to interact with the single player content before you can even go online and participate with friends or other players online. So it really restricts the player base. And when there's no players, you know, <laughs> you really can't, you know, fully utilize these mechanics. So if you want to build out your jet ski, I would say at minimum, it's usually going to take about two to three hours of interacting with the single player content of the game, specifically the story. And unfortunately, the story is not a great way to experience Jet Girls. Uh, the, the AI is ridiculously easy. The races are not challenging at all. So so it's basically just like a free ride through this, this story mode for the most part, with the exception of these missions that get assigned to certain uh, races. So they'll have some small objectives like, you know, oh, blast everybody on the, the field at once or or like pass by two, two other racers without, you know, falling behind a position or something like that. And when you're playing through the story, I would highly recommend focusing on these missions. They only give you cosmetics, but honestly, it will be more entertaining because you'll have some goal because otherwise the races are not competitive at all. And the story overall, I would say, is is pretty weak. It's, it's just not a lot going on. Um, you know, I've only ever played Center Kagura Peach Peach Splash out of the Center Kagura series and from Honey Parade games specifically. And I'd say this this story kind of suffers in the same way where a lot of the content doesn't really matter. You know, I would say, but like Center Kagura Peach Peach Splash, I think a part of it is also, you know, finding the characters you like and enjoying their, their dialogue. I'm personally a big fan of Teen California. There are a couple of Americans who forget how to speak Japanese a lot of times, so just like randomly insert English words into their Japanese sentences, and they're basically a bunch of 
bunch of of weeaboos trying to become ninjas, right? Um, so, so there are like little fun moments like that if you can find the right characters. But the overall story, and unless you like the overall cast, you'll you'll probably be kind of bored out of your mind for for a good, a good chunk of it. Um, but it does maintain that lighthearted nature of the Sinner Kagura series. So if you are looking for something that's not particularly you know dark, it's generally just kind of feel good, and the elements that they try to present as dark are not really at all. <laughs> They're just kind of like okay, I'm gonna roll my eyes at the story point kind of thing uh, but you know it is it, it does it does maintain that lighthearted nature so the story mode is not great the rest of the single player content doesn't fare much better uh, there's free race mode which essentially is just you know a standard race against computer controlled AI uh, you can set them to hard so they are a bit more competitive and as you're playing the story mode and as you're building your jet ski uh, this might be a good uh, way to kind of you know, get into some competitive races if there's nobody online. Um, but once you start getting to that upper level of jet ski, um, you know, you start fully equipping it out, you know, putting on the components that that work with your play style, uh, the, the, even the hard AI is just too easy to, to even keep up with, with your, your jet ski. So what you have to do to maintain a level of challenge in free mode is basically... Uh, remove parts in your jet ski just so you can artificially create difficulty. So the free race mode is not a good long-term, you know, expectation when it comes to offline content. Probably the best bet when it comes to offline content that is entertaining is the time trial mode because with this you can uh, essentially upload your ghost to the server, you can uh, play against other play players ghosts online, but because a large portion of this game's mechanics are centered around shooting other players, I, I really feel like you're losing a lot of the Jet Girl's experience uh, by, by going with this mode. I mean, it, it's better than nothing for sure, but I really think the only way you can experience Jet Girls as intended is if you can find other players online to do so. Now, there are small communities for the PC and PS4 right now. Um, I would definitely recommend looking into Anime Esports if you want to be on a PlayStation 4 or Kandagawa Jet Girls Racing League for PC. And right now, both communities are mainly racing at a particular uh, window on the weekend, but go check out their Discord and their, their websites for more direct information of when those coordinated racing times are. Um, I, I think it's worth mentioning this game doesn't really have that much fan service. Um, you know, despite being from the Cinder Creator developers, that could be either a good thing or a bad thing for you, um, depending on what your preference is. Um, but like I said, it does maintain that lighthearted nature. It has colorful graphics like the Center Kagura games do. Um, you know, some limited character customization options between, you know, being able to choose different hairstyles, different accessories. Um, there, there isn't a lot of clothing options, but if you are into like swimsuits and bikinis and stuff like that, there are a lot of options for that. I'm definitely more on the clothing side, so, so it's a little lacking for, for me. On, on, on that regard. It's also worth mentioning the PlayStation 4 version of this game has some performance issues. There's a lot of screen tearing, there's a lot of frame rate drops. So, so keep that in mind. I, I have not played the PC version, but the general impression I've gotten from people who have played that version is that version seems pretty solid technically. But yeah, like I said, I think Jet Girls is a great game and just like mechanically there's so much going on here uh, in a game that probably shouldn't deserve it. In the same way I probably feel with Peach Beach Splash, there's just, there's a lot of really good things about Peach Beach Splash, but unfortunately just the player base isn't there uh, for you to really full, fully utilize those mechanics, unfortunately. And both games just have the problem of just weak offline content. Also just have putting up a barrier to entry to new players, requiring them to grind out story content in order to to you know be competitive online and i really hope if honey parade games makes another one of these multiplayer focused uh i don't know you would call them water gun games uh for whatever genre is a third person shooter or as a racing game that they they really lower that barrier to entry and even the playing field online so people don't have to go out of their way to grind to to even participate in that online experience because both of these games just continue to suffer from from a low player base. Anyways, that's it for this week. Thanks for coming. OneControlReport.com is the website. So I actually have a stream of uh, the anime esports uh, competitive races that we did a, a, a while ago. So I'll go ahead and link that at the end of the video if you want to see some of the more intense racing in this game. You know, if you want, or I guess the raw footage of it. <laughs> um, and then also, um, you know, I'll go ahead and link a Peach Peach Splash competitive uh, game stream I did too. Uh, you know, both are, are, are just kind of casual stream content for the most part. But I think if you are, if you really do like what you see with Jet Girls, it's really worth seeing, you know, what the multiplayer experience is like 
And if you like what you see with Jet Girls, I would say go and look at Peach Beach Splash and what that can be with multiplayer as well. Um, unfortunately, it's just hard to get games online for both of them. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for your time, and I hope you have a great week. Bye!